Hi everyone, welcome and thank you all for joining today's webinar on developing mathematical mindset in students. My name is Ravali and I'm a part of team here at Turitu. I'm here by today's speaker, Mr. Vasu, head of international one-on-one -on -one tutoring services at Turitu and Ms. Priyanka from student counselor department. This webinar is an outreach, outreach program by Turitu for students to help in developing their learning skills and for students, for parents who are willing to give their children best education. Before we start off, let me give a quick overview of organization. And you all are aware, Turita is an e-learning platform and our vision is to provide quality education to every student by well-experienced faculty. Currently, Turita is available in USA, Canada, Middle East, India, Singapore, UK, and Australia regions. And programs offered by Turita are NAPLAN OC and one-on-one -on -one tutoring services for math, science, and English subjects in Australia region. Turita exclusives are Turita offers interactive learning methods as per student requirement, regular assessments to track the child's progress, and also doubt clarification sessions for making concepts stronger. Turito also provides parent apparatus to make you a part of child's learning journey. Moreover, we have top 2% certified educators whom we partnered with to envision our mission. Before getting into the specific, let me offer a quick intro about our speaker at today's event. Mr. Vasu is an international one-on-one -on -one tutoring head at Turito. He is a holder of Masters of Mathematics and Bachelor of Education with a vast experience of 30 years in education industry. He is an IIT Foundation course content preparation expert and mentored 80,000 plus IIT JE qualifiers and 4,000 plus SAT and ACT squares. And all the participants who have joined the webinar, please feel free to drop your questions at Q&A section. We'll be having Q&A session after uh, discussing about the topic. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to everyone. Now this is a introduction to mathematics. Mathematics is a powerful tool that helps understand the world, encourages logical reasoning, critical creative thinking and problem solving ability. Even though everyone learns mathematics at school, it is difficult to define exactly what mathematics is. Clearly numbers, shapes, and equations form part of it, but only a small part compared to the vast space of mathematical concepts and ideas. The best way to understand what mathematics is and what mathematicians work on is to do mathematics. One idea that appears everyone in mathematics is abstraction. Instead of thinking about particular numbers, shapes, equations, or any other objects, mathematicians tend to uh, think about their underlying structures and patterns. This means that the results called theorems are more general and provide deeper insight. Another fundamental idea is mathematics is proof. Mathematicians cannot just say that an idea is uh, true or test in a few cases. They need a rigorous and watertight argument to deduce that it is always true. Maybe this makes mathematics more difficult than other sciences, but it also means that mathematicians can obtain absolute and definite knowledge, which is impossible in any other discipline. Despite being so abstract and theoretical, mathematics has countless applications in every possible aspect of life. Without mathematics, our civilization would be little more advanced than the ancient Egyptians. We wouldn't have governments funded by a tax system, no phones, no television, no computers, no interest, and no satellite navigation. The cultural value and monetary 
economic value of mathematics are too large to measure. Now, moving ahead to the origin of mathematics. Now, what is, where is the origin of mathematics really happened? Mathematics originated from the Greek word means uh, tendencies to learn. Multiple branches, numbers, geometric forms, algebra, and others. The origin of mathematics accompanied the evolution of social systems. Many social needs require calculations and numbers. Conversely, the calculation of numbers enables more complex relations and interactions between peoples. Numbers and calculations with them require a well-organized operational system, such systems were perhaps the earliest models of complex rigorous systems. As we will see, not just one, but several number systems come to us from antiquity. However, and interesting as the basic notions of counting may be, the origins of mathematics include more than just enumeration, counting and arithmetic. Moving ahead, mathematics in daily life, the study of measurements, numbers and space, Max plays a vital role in all aspects of daily life, like time tracking, driving, cooking, or jobs like accounting, finance, banking, engineering, and software. Now, mathematics is very useful in everyday life. We use max concepts as well as the skills we learn from practicing max problems every day. Mathematics is important for all professions in the world. Every aspect of life is highly dependent on the use of numbers and arithmetic. Mathematics is the language of science. It is used to develop the rest of science and interpreted theories, especially physics, chemistry, astronomy, geography, etc. It enables thinkers to test their ideas by doing many experiments. Now, moving ahead, now understanding the basic concepts in lower grades. Now, basic concepts are the foundation to see through max right from lower grades. If the basic concepts are understood by a child, his or her journey in mathematics will be made easy. Now, right from uh, lower grades, the, it starts with number system. The student will understand what are numbers, what type of numbers he has. For example, it starts with uh, natural numbers. Then comes the whole numbers. Then he will understand about what are integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers. Now this is up to a certain grade he will understand. And as he moves into higher grade, he understands about the biggest system that is the complex number system. This is in uh, number system we will understand. Right from lower gates, he uh, takes addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, all these things. And then he will understand about what are prime numbers, what are composite numbers, what do you mean by factors, what do you mean by multiples, all these things he understands in number system. Again, as he moves into higher grade, algebra will be introduced. He must know what is a variable, what is a coefficient, what is a constant, what is an expression, what is an equation. All these things he has to understand in algebra, again, polynomial, all these things as he moves to the higher grade. Now, coming to geometry. Now, geometry, when it starts, he will understand about the shapes. What do you mean by a point? What do you mean by a line? What is a ray? What is a line segment? What are different types of angles which are there? What do you mean by parallel lines? What do you mean by perpendicular lines? the different various types of angles, angles on sides, angles on uh, based on the angles, then uh, the polygons, different polygons. Here you, you will understand about a quadrilateral. In a quadrilateral, what is a square, rectangle, 
parallelogram, rhombus, and then any other polygon. It can be a pentagon, five-sided figure, or a hexagon. All the polygons you will understand in geometry. Now, in lower grades, if you can maintain a formula book, wherein you can write all the formulas in this book so that it is quick to revise, to have a reference, and then have the practice of writing all the formulae without seeing, that will be very helpful because in lower grades, the concepts which he learns with real life examples. So he has, if he writes all the formulae in a formula book, he can revise and he can have a quick reference for all these things so that he will not forget as he moves to the higher grades. Now going ahead, now, how to develop skill in fast calculations? Now, see, as you know, you have to actually have the speed drills. For example, addition is there. Now, you have to add what numbers can be added so that the result will be 10, what numbers you will add so that the result is 100, or what numbers will add so that the result is 50. Like that, if we start thinking, mathematical thinking will develop, and Max will become really a fun to him. So addition after addition, you can involve with the problems like uh, uh, subtraction and then multiplication, division, and again, uh, making a consolidator of all these things. If you have, then he can develop fastness in calculations. And not only fastness, see, by seeing the addition, subtraction, you can also do uh, mentally, directly getting uh, mental calculations and doing the problem as soon as fast. Now, then a good calculation speed always comes handy while solving math problems. Often students seem to understand the concepts of various chapters, but still they cannot uh, score well in their math examination. One of the major problems with the many students is keeping up the pace during the exam. Mostly students who are not fast with calculations tend to mess up with the sums in the later and the later part of the question paper in the max exam. Once they start realizing that they are lagging behind during an examination, they start rushing and end up with mistakes. So fast calculations need to be developed right from the lower grade. Uh, so it may be percentages, it may be fractions, whatever it may be. So if he has uh, some assignments, some problems of practice, then he can develop a good fast calculation and he can calculate uh, fast. Now, moving ahead, understanding the correlation in some concepts. Now, there are many concepts which can be correlated, like from the lower grades to the higher grades. Now, when he is in the lower grade, now he has the relation, correlation between the percentages, fraction, and decimal. See, for example, if you see 10%, 10% as a fraction, it is 1 over 10, and the decimal value is 0.1. If you take 20%, that is 20 over 100, which can be taken as 1 by 5, 1 over 5, this is 0.2. Now, as you move 25%, 25% is 1 fourth. Now, this can be written as 0.25. Now, see, uh, if you have 33, 1 by 3%, this is 1 over 3, which can be understood as 0.33 recurring. Now, then if you have 66, 2 by 3%, this is 2 over 3. It can be taken as 0.66 recurring. So these percentages, fraction, and decimal, if the student understands, for example, uh, the actual value of a, uh, for example, the actual value of an object is 100 rupees. Now, if you have a 10% increase, what is 10%? 10% means one tenth of this, and that is 10. So when you increase it with 10, then the value will become of the object as one tenth. So this is how you can analyze this 10% as one by 10. One by 10 or into 100 will result to 10. And if you add 10, you get 110 for the object. Now, as you move ahead into higher education, now do you have a correlation between uh, matrices or determinants with the simultaneous equations? Now, actually here, the subject, how they will be related is a unique solution infinite number of solutions. This is nothing but consistency. And then you have no solution which is inconsistent. Now these have a correlation between the matrices or the determinants with the simultaneous equations. So if you can understand the correlation between these subjects, the problem becomes very easy. 
and as you move higher in higher education uh, like uh, you 10th 11th or 12th what happens is the three dimensional geometry can be correlated with vector algebra now it can be uh, the three in three dimensional you may have the direction cosines now what can be understood in vector algebra as a unit vector so everything whatever related they are lines planes whatever they are there they are, they can be correlated between both the subjects so this is the correlation you have you can even have the correlation between functions and calculus now functions in functions chapter you have a function for example it is strictly increasing or you have a function which is strictly decreasing now these kind of functions can be analyzed in calculus uh, you can uh, by using calculus you can find whether the function is increasing or decreasing so that if it is a strictly increasing function it is a one one function because when you draw a line parallel to x axis it will cut only at one point this type of things can be correlated between functions chapter and calculus chapter so the, like this you have some correlation in some concepts now moving ahead and just uh, need to have skills and short tips in some concepts now if the concepts are digested in a simple manner then there will be no waste of time to solve a problem now for example uh, we have the factorization now let us suppose we are factorizing x square plus 5x plus 4 now this can be written as x plus 1 times x plus 4 if the student is really smart enough to write this directly then he can analyze many problems in this for example if i write it as y is equal to x square plus 5x plus 4 or this is nothing but x plus 1 times x plus 4 this is nothing but it can be understood as a parabola easily we can see that here you have x intercepts as minus negative 4 and negative 1 and here you have y intercept to 4 so here by analyzing this through graphically and factorizing it so what short cuts you can find or what skills you can develop is you can find the vertex of this parabola you can find the distance between the x intercepts if the x intercepts are analyzed you can find the y intercept you can you, you can find even the concavity of this parabola whether it is concave upwards or concave downwards uh, having the uh, coefficient of x square whether it is positive or negative if the coefficient of x square is positive it is concavity is upwards and if the coefficient of x square is negative then the concavity will be downwards like this the parabola will be so all these skills can be developed by in one see one factorization which i am telling i am linking it to a parabola and understanding the things here so and even by seeing the discriminant of this particular this is nothing but a quadratic expression so this quadratic expression if you can observe here so by this you can observe whether you have uh, two distinct solutions or one distinct solution or uh, you can have even imaginary by seeing the graph and everything so for that first you must be able to factorize it fast so all these things skills if you have you can uh, really explore in some exams competitive exams like naplan or anything and given an equation of a circle identifying for example x minus a the whole square plus y minus b the whole square is equal to r square represents a circle equation where the center is a comma b and radius is r now if you can analyze the circle now if if, if it is a, uh, if the circle is nothing but a change to a point through a distance of 10 units like this whatever may be given from this problem now you can see where it is cutting x axis where it is cutting y axis how much it is uh, moved vertically or parallel or vertically or horizontally all these things you can observe if you have all these skills you can directly get the answer for this problem and then uh, you can uh, split an algebraic equation into factors as i said earlier by seeing the problem and then uh, calculating uh, you can for example if you have uh, 8% of 50 now this actually it is it's, it looks like a direct problem for a student but if you have another skill for actually this is written as 8 over 100 into 50 why can't we analyze this as uh, 50% of it? then 50% is nothing but half half of 8 is 
So directly it will give you the answer. Means that the student must know that he can interchange these two. I'm giving here eight percent of fifty. It can be any other person. For example, if I take four percent of twenty-five. Now, as you interchange these two numbers, you can directly analyze this problem as twenty-five percent of four and twenty-five percent is nothing but one fourth of four. That gives you one. these type of skills and short tips if you know directly you can solve the problem within less time utilized then moving ahead how to prepare for uh, performing uh, well in competitive examinations now here the fast calculations which i told you must know mentally how to calculate fast that speed develops from the lower grades as he analyzes the concepts the formulas or uh, all if you can remember then by seeing the problem mentally he can calculate and he can give the answer now fast calculations uh, uh, which he will learn right from lower grades which will be helpful in competitive examinations as uh, most of the competitive exams has mcqs wherein uh, if we so solve directly the problem then you can answer them with less number of time for example if you have a number 621 uh, with four zeros divided by 808 now see Seven times eight times seven is almost all fifty-six. Uh, so this answer will be in the range of uh, seven thousand to eight thousand. So if only one option is there between seven thousand to eight thousand, like seven six eight five, for example, only one option is there. Directly you can click to that answer because he knows here that eight uh, times seven is fifty-six, and this number is a little bit more than fifty-six. So the answer will land between seven thousand to eight thousand somewhere. So if if this is actually seven six eight five point point something, so seven six eight five is nothing but the approximated answer. So these uh, type of things, if you can develop, then in the competitive examinations you will have less uh, time utilized, and the other time you can utilize for the other problems which have some uh, application mode where you can uh, put some more time in those problems. Then we have. understanding the word problems now here many students struggle with word problems and this lowers their confidence during the examinations the word problems are mostly created to simulate real life situations so that students can relate them to uh, solving uh, them and then most students get uh, confused while reading and interpreting uh, word problems the best solution is to break up the word problems into simpler parts may make them into simple parts what is the information given in the problem what is the question asked in the problem then you can analyze in which direction you have to solve the problem what is the way to calculate the answer is always hidden in this word uh, problem itself so generally word problems are asked in uh, probability where the data will be supplied to you and when the data is supplied to you you must be sure what the data is given in the problem and what the question is asked and then even statistics statistics have word problems so this actually the data will be given to you it can be a problem on mean median or mode whatever it may be or standard deviation variation now then exponentiation problems also will be given a data will be given to you and based on this uh, the questions can be asked so understanding the word problems breaking them breaking the sentences is very important what is given what is asked whether i am solving the problem in the direction what is given that is very much important and then moving ahead analyzing graphs now see a graph is a diagram that is meant to represent data and to portray a relationship now generally it will give you a graph x axis so something will be given and y axis something is related now sometimes this graph can be a linear graph or it can be any other polynomial graph now for example if it is a linear graph what are the things you can understand from a linear graph now you can analyze what is the slope of this graph you can analyze what is the y intercept of this graph you can analyze what is uh, the x intercept what is the equation of this graph and any other information for example if this is a linear graph now he may ask you the perpendicular line to this passing through some point so all these things you can analyze from a linear graph now moving ahead if you have a 
quadratic graph or a parabola. As I said earlier, in quadratic graphs also, you can analyze the vertex, the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the distance between x-intercepts. By seeing the graph, you can even get the solution for a problem. So the graph actually gives you uh, many, uh, many solutions you can find from the graphs itself by seeing the graph. If you know what this type of graph is, what is the question uh, posed there? So, so that you can analyze the graph and you can tell. Even you have exponential graphs, you have logarithmic graphs, you have trigonometric graphs, you have inverse trigonometric graphs. Now, uh, as this kid moves from lower grades to higher grades, the subject get expanded and wherever he gets graphs. Now, let us suppose a 10th grade student, if he analyzes about uh, even uh, some 500 graphs, that will be beneficial. Even not only knowing the graphs, for example, this is a graph of an absolute value, y is equal to absolute value of x. The, even the student must know how to move this one vertically and horizontally. For example, this is more like this means it is y is equal to absolute value of x minus one. If it is moved on to the uh, left side, then this will be y is equal to absolute value of x plus one. Now, is it moved vertical, uh, vertically here? Then it will be y is equal to absolute value of x plus one. Now, if it is moved vertically downward, it is y is equal to absolute value of x minus one. Is it uh, multiplied by two, then actually it becomes uh, a, nothing but a compressed graph. If it is absolute value of x by two, it will be nothing but an expanded graph like this. So in graphs, you can analyze the transformations of graphs. So how a graph is transformed also you have to analyze, not only knowing the parent graph, how these transformations have been done, if you know, you can solve many problems in the exams which are related to these graphs and MCQs are given. So graphs plays very important role in one's life. And then moving ahead, how is mathematics made interesting? Now, see, first of all, uh, teaching the concepts with real life examples, that is very important. Now for uh, one example, I'll give you, this is a distributed property. Now this distributed property, it, uh, as a kid when he is in lower grade, he's taught about this distributed property, A times B plus C is A, B plus A, C. Now, when you introduce this distributed property, if you can introduce with some real life examples, for example, you have a rectangle. The rectangle uh, length is uh, 20 and the width is four. If you break the rectangle, this is 16 and this is four. Now it is nothing but actually the area of a rectangle is a 20 times four, or even you can write four times 20. This is commutative property. So four times, if you can break this as 16 plus four. So it is nothing but four times 16. This is the area of this that is 64. And this is a four times four, which is 16. So now if you add up this one, this will be 80. That is a four times 20 or 20 times four is 80. So here you can see that the distributive property is applied, A times B plus C equal to AB plus AC. Now, if you think that this is a complicated example, you can even go with an example where you are distributing two chocolates to a class consisting of 10 boys and five girls. So two into 10, 20 chocolates the boys get, and two into five, 10 chocolates the girls get. Totally it is 20 plus 10, that is 30 chocolates you have to distribute in a class consisting of 10 boys and five girls. You are distributing each with two chocolates. Now see, this is how the concept is delivered to a student with a real life example, even uh, a simple example on variable, for example. So mathematics must be nothing but it must be fun. Uh, there must be some mathematical thinking. For example, if I am telling about a variable, if a pen costs $5, now, if, if you buy two pens, it will become $10. Now, if you buy three pens, it will become $15. If you buy X pens, what is the cost? So it will become $5X. So $5X is the cost of the pen. This is how the variable is introduced. Why the variable is introduced? Now, this 5X can give the answer for any number of pens. If I'm purchasing 100 pens, then I can put the value of X as 100. And then I can find that 
the value becomes 500. 500 is the cost of the 100 pence which I purchase. Now, I, from lower classes to the higher grades, when the student moves, the mathematics can be made interesting by un analyzing the concepts really different. For example, when a teacher tells about parallel lines to a student in lower grades, she will tell that if the distance is maintained the same between the two lines, then we say that these are parallel lines. Now, as a student advances to the higher grades, maybe is in ninth or 10th, when he knows about infinity, that there is no point where it is infinity. So then we can say that lines which intersect at infinity are called parallel lines. That is the enhanced subject understanding by the student. And even when the parallel lines are cut by a transversal, these two angles are equal. That's what we derive and tell to the student. And this is understood as corresponding angles. Now see the beauty of Max. These can be analyzed as he moves into higher grades. He will understand about parallel lines. He will understand that the parallel lines will have the same slope. Now same slope means the angle of inclination will be made the same. Because these are angles of inclination, which is made same, that's why these two angles are equal. But those are nothing but the corresponding angles which he has understood in lower classes. So this is how the subject is analyzed. Even we teach a theorem actually in plane geometry, there is a theorem uh, to say that from the center, the line drawn, the line drawn to the tangent, which is touching at a point. Now this is perpendicular. Now to, do, to teach this, actually we take it as a theorem and then we prove this one. Now, as you analyze it, the distance uh, from a point to a line the shortest distance will be always perpendicular. That's how you can analyze the concept. Because if, if, you, are, if you are in a sea and on the seashore, if you want to walk a smallest distance and you want to touch the water, you will go perpendicularly. So this is how the things must be analyzed. Even this concept, which I was telling about the distributive property, in higher education, in permutation and combinations, you can understand this concept totally different. There is a fundamental principle of addition and there is a fundamental principle of multiplication. The two principles of fundamental principle of addition and fundamental principle of multiplication are the two major things which must be analyzed before starting permutations and combinations. The whole build of permutation and combinations is dependent on these two principles. And uh, as we move ahead, now learn Max the Torito way. Now how we are going to, to teach in Torito. And now here uh, the role of Max teacher is to deliver the concepts to the student with the real life word examples, engaging the student with active teaching, asking questions in between to be more interactive with the student. Now here, uh, as I said, learning the concepts with real life examples, that is very important so that he will never forget the concept. Not only having this one, you must have a lot of practice with the problems, the different types of problems. There must be exchange of problems between the teacher and the student. There is a nexus which is formed between the student and the teacher. So that because of the interaction between both of them, how to solve this problem, keep on asking questions whether he has understood. So engaging and active teaching, as I said, there is a two-way interactions here. So you are completely engaging the student so that the student concentrates on the teaching what is done. Eliminating the misconcepts. There are many misconcepts. For example, a student may think that A squared plus B squared over A plus B, I can cancel this A and this B. That is a misconcept. Or in uh, when he learns indices or exponents, he will think that X squared, the whole cube is X power five, which is not correct. So when, when somebody knows that this is wrong and what is correct, that is very important. So if you can show, for example, any definition, for example, in function, what is a function? If you show first what is not a function, then the student will understand what is a function. So that function definition, you can either show them uh, diagrammatically, you can draw Venn diagrams and you can show to the student so that he will understand. And whenever the misconcepts are shown to the student that this is wrong, say for example, root 64 is there. This is not equal to plus or minus 8. Now, many students have that this is plus or minus 8. That is wrong. So you can show them graphically here. Now, this is, for example, if you have y square is equal to 64, then the graph is like this, and then you will have two values. But if you have y is equal to root 64, 
then this will be like this, the graph where both this is the answer is positive. This is also positive, the values taken. So the graph will be present only in first quadrant. Here the graph is present in first and fourth quadrant. So here you must show by giving them the clarity in the concept, the confidence will develop in the student. Clarity must be given. So if I can show with the diagrams, uh, with the, the graphs, then the student will understand. He may say that I can square this one so that I will reach this one, but you can't manculate a function. When you manculate a function, you are missing the domain there. So never manculate the functions to get some other function. So these type of things, the student must understand from us. And uh, he is uh, motivated when he gives correct answer. Now, when he's giving incorrect answer, don't never be, never discourage the student. We will, instead of telling that, we tell the student that this way of telling the answer is wrong is only because your direction of thinking is wrong because you have analyzed like this. That is the smart way of teaching the subject. And uh, this is the fear of max by building interest. So as I said, when you teach the student, interest means, for example, let us suppose you are telling small kids. Even now, these days, the research says that the animals recognize zero and they do arithmetic. Crows recognize zero. The monkeys recognize, they do subtraction. When three, bana, three uh, bread pieces are given and one of the bread pieces is taken by them, they did subtraction. So even animals are doing max. You can see many things in this real life that max is done. So this is what I want to convey to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, for, sir, for detailed explanation about the topics here. And let's move into Q&A session, sir. We got some questions from participants. Yeah. What is the best way to remember the theories and formulas? Now, as I was telling about the understanding of the uh, basic concepts in lower grade, uh, maintain a formula book that is very important for a student. Write all the formulas in that book. And not only writing them, please write, please ask the student to write them without seeing so that one day he will not forget. So he has to write, he has to correct himself. Now where he's going wrong, again, if he writes the other day, then where he was wrong, if he can remember it and next time if he's not doing the mistake, he can understand the concepts very well. So that is how remember means you can't, you need not, you can't by heart many formulas. There are many, many formulas in Max. You can't by heart all of them. So as you practice them and the concepts when you practice, that's what I told earlier also. The real life examples where the concepts are understood, nobody will forget them. So, and even the formulas application also, if you do problems based on the application, you will not forget those concepts. How many tables in mathematics should be known? To a maximum of 30, that is uh, important because uh, up till 30, if you know the tables, uh, that will be very good. Because uh, as you move into the higher grades, as I told in MCQs, where, where uh, really mental calculations, if you can get the answer for a problem, you will be benefited. Uh, the time management can be done in the examinations. So you, if you know up till 30, that would be great. How to manage time in competitive examinations? Yeah. So this is what I was telling in competitive examinations. What he has to do is, see, first go through the paper. Wherever the problems are easy, solve them first. Then the other time you can spend on to the other problems which really you feel hard or they are applicative mode or there is a depth in the knowledge where, or it is multi-concepted those kind of problems, it will take time to solve. So first solve the easy ones so that you will have a lot of time to solve the other problems. Time management must be done. Uh, to really do very well in competitive examination before you are going to any competitive examinations, you must have the practice of these. So ask a student to solve as many papers as he can do. After solving every paper, have an analysis of each and every paper. What, in what way I'm doing the mistake? Whether I'm reading a problem and I'm wasting time, a lot of time in one problem, what happens is if let us suppose three minutes is wasted to a one problem, five problems, it will be 15 minutes waste. So like that, if he has a practice of answering these kind of papers, then in the main examination, he will perform well because the mistakes by analyzing each and every paper. Now, why I, I didn't get this question? Is my concepts are not sufficient what I have? So take a book and write what, what is the, the where you are actually, whatever the negatives you have, 
uh, so if you can uh, write those i think uh, it is uh, very well for you so that is how you can develop a uh, skill and you can manage time uh, really you can solve within less time in competitive examinations what if you are stuck in one some how to handle it now see uh, this is uh, where uh, sorry what if you are stuck in one sum how to handle it now see uh, if you are if the student is stuck in one sum uh, whenever the student is given problems either by the teacher or by the parent now immediately we have a tendency to discuss the answer with the student let him struggle first struggle will lead to the answer one day or the other there he will uh, just get the answer so i am telling not to struggle for many days but at least if he struggles for uh, some few minutes or uh, something if he waste time then you can discuss with him not discussing the answer but telling him in what direction he has solved the problem is the, was the direction correct did he have the birds view of the problem answer how to get it so like that you must discuss with the student and you must actually push the student towards the solution of the problem never give answers or never ask the student uh, to see the answers so that uh, whether his answer is correct or wrong in the first phase itself so if he is stuck in one problem let him struggle so struggle when you struggle only you'll get problem solutions and uh, one day will be there where the struggle will be less and you will be doing very good how to approach uh, hard topics in maths yeah so hard topics means for example there are some dry subjects in maths also for example if i take it in uh, higher grades uh, calculus is a considered to be a dry subject for by many now here when you have hard topics first the first topic which you are learning in that write all the formula whether you understood the concept or not otherwise see as many types as if sometimes for example what we do is with the students if we didn't understand the concept we would think that to deliver it in another way so in the best possible way we deliver it so that the student understands the concept again give some more examples and then try uh, try to get more and more examples so that that concept is understood then where if you have lot of formulas for example trigonometry is there you have lot of formulas and which formula when to apply in which problem nobody understands sometimes so analyze the formulas have a practice of writing the formulas without seeing and then after that is known then understand the problem as i said in word problem if you remember now i said to break the sentences so there actually to understand the problem what is given in the problem what is the direction of the problem that must be understood so if any hard topic is there first understand the understanding the concept is important having all the formula uh, revising them is important and then understanding each and every problem the direction what is given in the problem what is the direction to solve the problem is very important so that's how you can eliminate uh, these hard topics into simpler ones how many hours should an average student spend on math subject on a daily basis first of all uh, 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 average student means sometimes we say that the student is average or not performing well is only because his concepts are not correctly his foundation may not be good his concepts may not be analyzed properly uh, he has to spend a lot of time uh, because as he practices a lot he will develop one day and he will become a very good student for that what we have to do is uh, he must have a time table let us suppose he has uh, two three subjects more he has now have a time table in what time what to study because he is uh, somewhat lagging behind in max he has to spend some more time in max uh, for that what you have to do is first whether the concepts are understood by the student whatever the formulas came in each and every topic in max uh, please make a formula book uh, as a student to write without seeing we see whether the student has understood all the formula and he remembers a lot and then going to the depth of the each and every topic that whether each and every problem is understood by the student now whether he is able to read the problem and understand the things or not 
See, if the concepts are not there, you won't understand. But if the concepts and formulas are okay, then what is given, what is questioned, that you can understand, you can do very well. So the time for a student who is not performing well in maths, the time must be put uh, more effort. For that, you have to dedicate a lot of hours to this and you can reduce the hours for those subjects is really doing very good. So on an hourly basis means it all depends upon the student. So on a uh, daily basis, how many hours means we can't tell. It may be three hours or four hours, depending upon the student and depending upon his grades or grades and what is the subject depth he didn't understand. That's very important. So if a lot of things have to be analyzed, apart from the school, you must have a timetable where this time you must do max, especially uh, some of them, they dedicate a lot of time. So here you can ask the student to spend three or four hours. If the school is there, if the school is not there, more number of hours maybe six hours, but nobody can sit six hours or five hours straight away. So you, with breaks or something, you can uh, ask a student to sit and analyze the concepts, the formulas and the problems. Each and every problem, if he solves, then he can get it. How can I avoid making calculation mistakes? Practice. Practice makes uh, everyone perfect. So to avoid making uh, calculation mistakes, uh, give a lot of, uh, do a lot of assignments, a lot of problems. So that will eliminate uh, the doing mistakes. Now mistakes, uh, if you have done conceptual mistakes, now that must be rectified in concepts. If it is a calculation mistake only, then that is not a problem. So simply you have to do a lot of problems, have a practice of a uh, lot of assignments you have to practice, so that will eliminate. If it is a calculation mistake. But if you, somewhere you are missing a concept, then that mistake is a different mistake. How many classes per week is there a trial class? Yes, I think this can be answered by Priyanka, I think. Or Ravali. Yeah, Priyanka. Yeah, sir. Priyanka will answer this. Priyanka, are you there? Yeah, hi. Hello. Uh, hi, ma'am. Hi. Uh, can you please repeat the question? How many, How many classes, classes per week is there a trial class? Yeah. Like a uh, demo class. So, yeah. So we have a trial session, which is free of cost. And uh, usually we give two days in a week class. And, uh, but it totally depends. Like frequency of classes totally depends on your requirements. It can be more than two as well. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. How to build motivations? See, motivations, see, uh, in the last, if you remember, one of my slide was how Max is made interesting. Now, this is nothing but there must be an interaction with the student, continuous interaction in our online classes. And uh, this interaction is nothing but to build confidence in the student and clarity. Now, as we build confidence and clarity, we, are, we actually motivate the student towards working of the problem uh, where there is some clarity so that he will not do a mistake. So motivations are given when he answers correctly, we motivate this child saying that uh, good, very good, all these things so that he gets motivated into the subject. Not, not only that, max cannot be straight away taken uh, like that. So what we do is uh, as uh, we introduce each and every concept, the real life examples when you teach, uh, he gets interest into the subject having uh, puzzles, games, all these kind of uh, practices we do so that the student will not uh, get deviated from the subject. So every time motivating him that uh, the, today we have learned this, next we are going to learn what, next class we'll go, we are going to uh, link up this one with the next chapter. All these things we are going to tell the student and we can motivate the child towards success. Uh, is that so, Ravali? That's all? As of now, there are no questions, sir. We'll be ending the session, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, okay. everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you for detailed explanation about the topic and uh, answering all the questions and questions with patience, sir. And yeah. we'll be ending the session now. We'll be having a webinar session in the coming week as well. We hope to see you all again. Until then, if you have any queries, please write to us at care.tirito.com. For more info, please visit our website, www.tirito.com. Tirito makes every student to learn mindful but not handful for better learning and better results. Join Tirito. Thank you. Have a nice day.